check this out. Okay, look at this. You watching? Watch these two. Bam. <laughs> wow. Okay, okay. I know. The tests I've been doing so far are preliminary, okay? We've looked at the Mac M1 computers, we looked at the MacBook Air and the Mac Mini, and then you told me in the comments, Alex, these aren't real developer workflows. What are you doing? I know, we have to start somewhere, okay? So we took a look at how these behave under different circumstances, different development scenarios, iOS, Android, JavaScript, and the M1 is turning out to be quite a powerful contender in the world of development. But what about real workflows? What about really taking it to the next level? I mean, developers don't just pop open one little program like VS Code and see how quickly it starts up. No, we have 10 instances of Chrome tabs open or 30 like me. We have several instances of VS Code running on the machines. We have build processes that we have to do continuously. So that's what we're doing today. We're starting a new chapter a new page we're going to be doing some heavy testing and first thing we're going to do to really kick things up a notch is take a look at this ionic ninja comment thanks for leaving the comment ionic ninja ionic ninja i wonder what technology you use hmm so ionic ninja says i'd love to see how the mba macbook air m1 performs compiling for long periods of time maybe 40 to 60 minutes and yes this is actually a good test. You know why? Because the MacBook Air doesn't have a fan and compiling something for a very long time is gonna take a toll on the CPU. So what I wanna do is take this project that Ionic Ninja also recommended, and everybody knows this project. It's an open source project called WebKit, a beast of a project. So it's a very large code base, 11 gigabytes, I believe, once it's already on your machine and everything is unpacked. First thing we're gonna do is we're gonna clone the repo. That in itself is a monumental task and it takes like three to four minutes to do because it's so huge and not because of the network delay. No, right now I'm operating on a one gigabyte network here, so it's pretty fast. It's the unpacking process. And we've seen so far that the M1 performs amazingly fast when it comes to disk IO. So we're gonna do that. We're gonna compare the Intel and the MacBook Air to see how quickly it unpacks and close the repo and gets it set up. And then we're gonna build WebKit. We're gonna do this in release mode. We're gonna do it in debug mode. And we're gonna do it several times in a row. We're also gonna compare the secondary builds. After you build it the first time, the secondary build skips what you've already built. It goes through the check. It does a few other steps and that should take much faster, maybe a minute or so. So we're gonna see which one of these is gonna be performing faster in that sense as well. And I'm gonna do this a couple of times in a row. I'm gonna do this on three machines actually. MacBook Pro, Intel i9, MacBook Air M1, and get it over here, the Mac Mini, also M1 chip. This is gonna take a while because each compilation step is probably gonna take a half an hour. I'm gonna pause the video while it's doing its thing. Luckily, the compiler actually spits out the time at the end of the compilation, how long it took, so I can come back and check. So I don't have to sit here and you don't have to watch me sit here. All right, let's kick things off. There's one thing I want you to pay attention to. This is kind of a side test, okay? So on my MacBook Pro, I've opened up Activity Monitor and the remaining charge is 100%. I'm not gonna have this plugged in while doing this test and we're gonna see at the end of it how much the battery drained. All right, come on now, this is cheating. The MacBook Air with the M1 says that the remaining charge is 100% and time remaining is 20 hours. All right, we'll see about that after I'm done with my tests. There's no point in showing the Mac Mini because it's plugged in. All right, I'll keep that running in the background. Here's what we need. I'm gonna go over to github.com slash webkit slash webkit. Let's copy that URL and I'm gonna clone it into a directory I created called webkit. Git clone, paste that in there, but I'm not gonna run it just yet. I wanna run these at the same time. So I'm gonna go ahead and start that process here and on the Mac mini. Okay, I only have two hands so I can press enter at the same time on two of these machines. The Mac mini is further away, so that's gonna have to be last. Anyway, these two are gonna be pressed first at the same time, enter. And now that one. This is not the actual meat of this video. This is still relevant because what we're doing is we're fetching 
a very large repository and it's preparing the repository. So after you fetch it, after you download all the code, I believe that's about six and a half gigs worth, it's going to set it up automatically as part of the process. And that takes a while too. So we'll see who finishes first. In the meantime, it's interesting to see the processes here as far as CPU and Git right here on the Intel is taking up 13.9%. It bounces back and forth 28%. Right now it's just downloading, but when it starts setting it up, that really kicks it up a notch. On the M1 MacBook Air, CPU Git is taking up 17%. Now, even though I do have a gig connection here, this is slowing down things a little bit because I'm fetching on three machines at the exact same time. Got an update for you. The MacBook Air finished downloading first, and now it's resolving deltas, or whatever the heck that means. It finished before the MacBook Pro and the Mac Mini. Now, I'd expect a download not to be faster on one machine over another machine because we're all on the same network here, but who knows what could have happened. I wouldn't read too much into that, but it is curious why the MacBook Air finished first. Maybe if I switch these on the desk, the MacBook Pro would finish first. Anyway, the Pro is now resolving deltas. It's finished the download and we're still waiting for the download to complete on the Mac Mini. Now this resolving deltas part, this is pretty warm, the MacBook Pro. The Air is cold, but the next stage I believe is going to be very processor intensive. So that's the part where I'm expecting the fan to really kick in on the MacBook Pro. Taking a look at the activity monitor. Ooh, this one is pretty intense. Git is taking up 300% of CPU on the air. Git is taking up 80% of the CPU. Yet they're doing the same thing, resolving deltas. So MacBook Air finished resolving deltas and updating files. It just it finished, it's done. Here on the MacBook Pro, ah, there's that fan. I hear the fan now kicked in, about halfway done with the resolving the deltas. The mini, I'm surprised. That's the slow one of the bunch, but again, the network requests, right? So not sure why that one is slower. It could be because the antennas of the two laptops are actually upright, so don't know. But now look at this, the mini is now resolving deltas while the Pro is still resolving deltas at 64%. Let's see if the mini actually catches up and surpasses the pro. I know this is riveting, right? We're still not at what this video is about, but we're having so much fun racing these computers, right? While that's happening, let's take a quick glance at the energy usage. So right now, remaining charge on the MacBook Pro is 92%, time remaining three hours. MacBook Air, we're at 99% remaining charge, 20 hours time remaining. Barely even hit a dent in that one. And look at this. The Mac Mini has caught up and now surpassed the MacBook Pro as far as the processor intensive part of this. So interesting, right? MacBook Pro started the resolving deltas part first while Mac Mini was still downloading. And now Mini M1 has passed and is about to finish while the MacBook Pro is still resolving deltas and Mac Mini is done. So. There you go, um, that's the download part. As you can see, the download itself was full of surprises, full of fun. Now we're gonna actually build a thing. And I'm not gonna make you sit and watch the whole thing because it takes a good amount of time. So I'm gonna set this up on the Mac Mini and the MacBook Air because they're ready. And to do that, we go into the WebKit directory and then we execute tools, scripts, and then build WebKit. And we can give it a flag, either debug or release. I'm gonna build the release mode first. So dash dash release, all right? And let's set up the Mac Mini now. Now here, they're gonna report the time to me so I don't really need to press anything at the same time. MacBook Pro is done. Let's set it up. Tools, scripts, build WebKit, dash dash release. You know, it's just so much fun pressing them at the same time. I'm gonna do these two at the same time again. And go. All right. <sighs> I love a good test. Really curious to see what happens with this one. Also really curious to see what's gonna happen with a battery after this is done. Maybe the MacBook Pro is gonna die before I'm done with my several tests here. I'll be back after this is done. All right, folks, this thing finished building and the fan has calmed down. It's gotten a lot warmer in this room since this MacBook Pro has been working at it. So if we take a look at this, we'll see that the Mac Mini finished in 23 minutes and one second. The MacBook Air with 16 gigs of RAM. By the way, the Mini and the Air both have 16 gigs of RAM and the M1 chip. 16 gigs of RAM, MacBook Air, 25 minutes and six seconds. And the MacBook Pro with Intel i9 
with 64 gigs of RAM, 32 minutes and 20 seconds. Pretty big difference. Let's take a look at the battery. So here's activity monitor. We'll go to the energy tab and same thing on the MacBook Air. Remaining charge on the Air is 83% with 17 hours and 48 minutes left according to the time remaining here that's listed. The MacBook Pro, I'm sorry to say this, the remaining charge is 35% with only 29 minutes left. I don't have enough juice in the MacBook Pro to do another build. I will not be able to do a debug build, that is. I'll be able to do a release build because that only takes a minute or so to do. And that's what I'm gonna do right now. I'm gonna plug it in after the release build and do a debug build. We'll get it nice and warmed up. Now, as far as temperature goes, MacBook Pro is hot. MacBook Air is warm. The surface of the computer, it's not hot. So even without the fan, the MacBook Air, during a long build process, managed to beat out the MacBook Pro with a fan. All right, let's do a quick release build again. This one is not gonna take long because it's already built. All this is gonna do is just rip through all the built assemblies and make sure everything is there. I'm gonna do the same thing on all three machines and let's go. Should be a quick one. Let's take a look. All right, and the report says 45 seconds on the Mac mini, 45 seconds on the MacBook Air and MacBook Pro is still working. Let's give it a minute. I know this is hard for you, but come on, the other folks are waiting. One minute, 32 seconds. Twice, twice as long. Okay, so you saw a full build. You saw that the MacBook Air and the Mini both kicked the butt of the MacBook Pro. And you saw a subsequent build, a release build, that took two times faster on the M1 chips than the Intel chip. Now, we're gonna do a debug build, which is also gonna take a significant amount of time. And at this point, the MacBook Air is already warmed up because it's so warm and it doesn't have a fan. Maybe it'll be slower. Maybe there's gonna be some throttling. I don't know, we'll see. Let's kick things off. So in order to do that, I'm gonna give it a flag called debug instead of release. And I'm gonna do the same thing on all three machines. I'm gonna kick things off and we'll see what happens with this one. Let's do it, bam. And they're off doing a debug build. Let's see how long this one takes. Okay, so putting my face right here, I feel the heat. The heat just coming up off of my MacBook Pro <laughs> with the Intel chip. Okay, so temperature check right now. The front of the MacBook Air is cool. The back of it is room temperature, I'd say. MacBook Pro, I wouldn't call it super hot, but it's pretty warm. Let's take a look at the times. The Mac Mini finished in 17 minutes, 16 seconds. The MacBook Air finished in 18 minutes, 24 seconds. The MacBook Pro, 23 minutes, 38 seconds. All right, folks. Compilations, multiple compilations in a row are done faster on the MacBook Air and the Mac Mini with the M1 chip than on the Intel MacBook Pro, supposedly a more powerful machine. And definitely three times more expensive than the little machine sitting next to it, which is the MacBook Air. Kind of makes you think twice about which one you wanna buy, huh? All right, let's do a quick rebuild with a debug flag again on all three of these. Just for the sake of completion, you don't have to stick around, but I would appreciate it if you give me a thumbs up, if you did enjoy this video or if you found it useful or informative, let's keep going for those that do want to see the rest. Now this part should take like 40 seconds, 45 seconds maybe on the M1s and maybe over a minute on the MacBook Pro with the Intel chip as we've seen happen with the release build. Let's see, okay, 52 seconds, MacBook Air, Mac mini at 50 seconds, still waiting on MacBook Pro to finish. Okay, one minute, 35 seconds for the MacBook Pro. I don't know if there's much more I can say about this, but it's pretty clear who the winner is. It's definitely the M1 chips in this case. We've even doubled up this test over here with the Mac mini and the MacBook Air both having about the same result. Now, the MacBook Air is completely fanless and is doing pretty much just as well as the Mac Mini. They're on par with each other. So if you're trying to decide between those two machines, you really ought to make that decision based on whether you want to be portable or not. Now, 
Let's take a final look at the energy consumption here. The MacBook Air has not been plugged in during any of these builds at all. And we're down to 69% remaining charge with 13 hours and nine minutes left, according to the estimates there. Apple wasn't lying, folks. That's pretty amazing. <laughs> MacBook Pro already almost died the first time I ran the build and I plugged it in and now it's on its way back up. 64% remaining. It doesn't show how much time is remaining. It says calculating, but I doubt that it's gonna be 13 hours or anywhere close to that. My guess at 64% it's gonna be an hour 45 minutes. So that's it. Thanks Ionic Ninja for suggesting this build. I think it was a very eye-opening build and uh, I do look for these kinds of comments that recommend a large build that's uh, more realistic to a developer flow because we like to tax the system that we're working on and we usually have lots of different things open and uh, those tests are also coming. I'm gonna simulate my typical working scenario where I have tons of Chrome tabs open and several code editors open at the same time and I'm doing development and building stuff. I wanna know what your workflow is. What is keeping your computer busy? Let me know down in the comments below. I really wanna hear from you so we can make these tests happen here and really do some more comparisons for the Intel chip versus the M1 chip. Anyway, thanks for showing up. Thanks for staying and for watching this video. If you do like this kind of content, subscribe to the channel and I'll see you in the next one. Take care.